Hi everyone and thank you for joining me with Dishing With Me, Heather D. And I am not going to be standing up for this video. This is a sit down video. Um, not feeling too well or anything. But I feel that since it is the holiday season, I figured I'd go ahead and share some little tips um, to make this holiday season a little easier for everyone. Instead of making everything at the last minute, we're going to talk about some steps on how to make things a little easier for each and every one of you as far as getting your prep work done now. And this is good for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. So we're going to start out with freezing techniques and some things that are good to um, freeze and get prepared ahead of time so you don't have to wait till the last minute. Hey guys, can you turn that TV down? Something please? Thank you. My children. So first we're going to start with cornbread. Now, for Thanksgiving, a lot of people who make cornbread dressing usually do their cornbread and then they get all their stuff together. So right here, I made a cornbread last night and I made a small pan because two of my kids like dressing, two don't. So, since it'll be only my fiancé and I and possibly one child eating um, the dressing, I figured not making a whole bunch. I didn't want to take a chance on wasting food, so I did a small pan, and this is just a little pan from Dollar Tree. Um, I made a small pan of um, cornbread, and this is homemade cornbread. Um, if you'd like to have that recipe or that video, I can post that um, later on. Um, some of us may have food savers. Now, cornbread you can freeze. Um, it's just a matter of the right techniques of trying to get your cornbread um, so you don't get that freezer burnt or that freezer taste. And you really have to know how to wrap up your products. So I'm going to show you with half of my cornbread. I'm going to take this cover off. And this is mainly for those who may not have a food saver. I'm going to cut this in half. And we're going to start out with half of the cornbread. Now, cornbread, like I said, for those of you who don't figure, you know, oh, I would rather wait till the cornbread is nice and fresh. Why put all that hard headache and all that hard work on you at the last minute, the night before, or the day of. If you can at least get the cornbread done, then you can do the rest of the methods later. So, um, you have your cornbread made ahead of time. And what you want to do is, you want to get you some wax paper. Because you want to wrap this as much as possible. You want to keep this fresh. Like I said, you don't want that freezer um, burnt. So we're going to use a nice sized piece of wax paper and I'm going to wrap this over and kind of like you would do a Christmas gift and as tight as possible because you want to keep it from getting any type of air coming into or coming in contact with your um, dish. Then we're going to use plastic wrap. Now you could use plastic wrap only but this is all about protection, and sometimes plastic wrap can even get those little air pockets. So I'm using wax paper, plastic wrap, and we're going to use foil. So now that I have the bread wrapped this way, I'm going to hold it face down onto my plastic wrap, and as tight as possible, I'm going to cover it up also on here. And you want to make sure, like I said, get as much air out as possible because you want this tight. I'm going to move this out the way now that it's wrapped. And you see, got it wrapped so far twice. Now for the foil. And if you can find some good heavy duty foil, that'll be perfect. So I'm going to use my foil. Put that to the side. And stick it on here. And I'm going to lay it face that, um, do the top part down. And this is going to be wrapped. And I let you know, 
and this is a promise. When you do these steps, you will not have any freezer tasting cornbread. You have to really just take the time to do it. Um, if you're making for a large portion, cut it into the portions that you feel that your family um, size is going to need. And then just do the, um, your wax paper. And you want to do your plastic wrap and then your heavy duty foil. And you see, it's as tight as possible. Then with good freezer bags, you're going to stick it in your freezer bag. And if you want, you can label it um, cornbread for Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving cornbread for dressing. And then you just seal it up. You want to let all the air out as much as possible. Squeeze it. Because this will save you a lot of heartache and last minute things. You know, steps, I mean. Squeezing out all the air. And it looks almost like it's vacuum sealed. And your cornbread is done. You have it triple wrapped and it's in your freezer bag. And all you have to do is just label it. So I'm going to place this to the side here on top of my freezer. And then for those of you who have a food saver, your food saver bags come in handy too. I ordered this off of QVC about five years ago. And I love it because it's not big. I can slide this in the drawer. It comes with a rechargeable um, portion and everything. I, I just love it. And I don't even have to really wrap this up or anything this portion of the cornbread because it's going to be protected. So I'm going to take my other half of my cornbread and stick it in. And some of the stores have the Ziploc version and if you have the Ziploc version it works just as well. Just going to zip this up. Take out some of the air and help it. You want to make sure it's sealed all the way. You know, go over it more than once if you have to. You find your little opening here where you're going to place it and you seal it up. And look, I got it vacuum sealed. So I have my cornbread prepared two ways. I got it using my um, food saver. And then for those of you who don't have a food saver, which is a nice Christmas gift, or those of you who don't have one, ask a family member, get the little small one if you don't have counter space. I'm in an apartment. I don't have a lot of space. So this little handy one is perfect. Um, or you could do it this way. Triple wrapping using wax paper first, your plastic, your heavy duty foil, and your freezer bag. And that is steps you don't have to worry about when Thanksgiving comes. All you have to do is just get your broth and all your vegetables, and you're set. As you can see here, I have my um, stuff for my um, dressing already done as well. Um, at the bottom here, I have my um, celery. I finally chopped it up using my machine, and then I also use my hands and just put it down and chopped it up really, really fine. This is my celery already set. And these are some orange bell peppers. Sometimes when I do my dressing for the holidays, I like the different color bell peppers. So when they have it on sale, or if you know someone that have a garden and have um, have bell peppers and you can get it from a farmer's market, those are the best kind. You know, get it early and you wash them up real good. And then you can either julienne them. I julienne some because I have different bell peppers in my freezer. I julienne or thinly sliced for when I want to do stir fry. Um, I have finely chopped for my dressing here. So I have my celery that is finely chopped and my bell pepper that's finely chopped for my dressing. And at the top here is celery that's coarsely chopped into like maybe quarter inch size pieces. It's not for my dressing, but when I want soup, I got it right here. And I don't have to worry about buying my celery at the last minute. Whenever you can catch your celery on sale, this is the perfect way to save it. And you can do the same method using your food saver or you can stick it in a baggie and then wrap it in some plastic wrap and your heavy duty foil 
and just put it in a freezer bag and you want to seal it and label what your vegetables are so that way you'll know what items to um, pull when it's time to use a recipe. And that's my phone, but it'll go to um, voicemail or my answer machine. Another thing you can freeze are your nuts. Your, your nuts can be placed in a freezer. This will help keep your nuts nice and fresh. When you keep your nuts in a warm area, they have the tendency to become on a stale or they could become rancid. So if you want your nuts to last a long time for the holiday season, you want to definitely try to make space and put them in your freezer. And it will keep them fresh for a very long time. And no, they will not get freezer burn, and they're going to still have this milky tech consistency. Sierra, can you turn that off, please? Can you, like, stop it or something? Because I'm doing my video. Just t pick it up, turn it on, and turn it off. Okay, so we're having some difficulties. Okay, thank you. So, like I said, your nuts, if you're going to put them in the freezer, when you find your nuts on sale, and I have my sliced almonds, and I have my pecans for pecan pie, or whatever dessert you're planning to make, um, prepare for the holidays, put them in the freezer, or at the bottom of your refrigerator, whatever. It keeps them fresh for a very long time. You can do that with your flour. If you find your um, all-purpose or self-rising flour, whatever you use for your baking, Put that in your freezer or at the bottom of your refrigerator if you can. It is perfect place to store it. You want to always store products like this in a cool, dry area. Um, with nuts, because they have the natural oils in them, you don't want them to be stale. Place them in your freezer. If you have a chest freezer, it's a perfect area to keep them cool and keep them fresh for up to a year. And, like I said, they will not go bad on you. Once you open them, you want to make sure you close out the air as much as possible. And you want to also possibly put them in a freezer bag. But after that, you can stick them in your freezer. And whenever you want your nuts, they won't be rancid or anything, like I said. You pull them out. They're ready for you. They're good. Nice and fresh as if you just bought them. Um, I hope these techniques and everything that I've shared with you is very helpful for you this holiday season because I don't want you to be stressed out. Um, I plan to do my sweet potato filling the same way. Um, if you plan on making sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie, whichever is your favorite, I'm a sweet potato pie person, um, I'm going. you can mix up your um, filling for your sweet potato pie. Um, put it inside. Once it cools, you want your filling to be completely cool. You can either cook it and add all your sweeteners and stuff to it and you're ready to go or you can just cook it and mash it up or blend it up and then put it in your Ziploc bag completely sealed and make sure you get as much air out as possible because that's kind of a liquid type form because it's mush you want um or after you you know mash it up you want to definitely possibly double bag it in a two good freezer bags and then stick it in the freezer so if you prepared your uh, sweet potato pie your pumpkin pie filling now let it completely cool and it's still early part of November it'll be okay for those extra two or three weeks because when you get ready to pull out and do your pies all you have to do is pull it out the night before let it sit at the bottom of your refrigerator if you have space and let it thaw or you can pop it in your microwave real quick let it thaw out in the microwave put it on maybe two or three minutes finish it up on your um stove re reheating it up or whatever add your seasonings or your spices and stuff like your brown sugar your your egg your milk you know whatever you use for your sweet potato pie your all spice and stuff or your pumpkin pie you got it already prepared and if you buy your crust, hey, there, that's less work you have to worry about. And if you make your crust, hey, you make your crust ahead of time. This is all about trying to prevent from waiting at the last minute with a lot of your um, holiday prep work. Do some of it as early as possible. I have my corn on the cob um, that I found on sale when my grocery store had them 10 ears for a dollar. 
So, of course, I bought like 15 ears and pop them in half. Um, blanched them real quick or half steam them. And then I use my freezer bags, pop them in the freezer, using my food saver. It really, really helps. So when the holidays come, if I want some corn on the cob, I can pull it out, steam it the rest of the way or boil it however you want it or even roast it in the oven. You're good to go. You can do that with your potatoes. If you have the little red potatoes for roasting around your turkey or your chicken or whatever you plan to have. Prep work is all is the key. Try to do as much as possible. Your potatoes, all of that. Because if you can buy it in the freezer section at your grocery store, you know, then you can do some of that stuff yourself. Save a little money, save a little time, and that way that's less you have to do at the last minute. I hope you enjoyed these tips and definitely stay tuned for more veg um not more vegetables, more videos um for this holiday season, for Thanksgiving and for Christmas and possibly New Year. Um, please click like, share, and subscribe to this channel, Dishing With Me, Heather D. You can find other recipe ideas and stuff um, on my uh, Facebook and Instagram pages, Dishing With Me, Heather D, 9708. And I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you for watching. and God bless.